The Walking Dead A New Frontier is, quite honestly, one of the messiest games I've ever played. It's a game that was made when Telltale was arguably at its absolute worst. Just do us both a favor and pretend you're still asleep. I wouldn't start talking if I were you. We still got a haul ahead of us, and I'm not about to listen to you. What the hell? Oh, stop! Oh, shit! Oh, no, no! It lacks polish, and more importantly, passion. It feels like a project that nobody wanted to make, but was mandated to by the studio, and the final result really shows. Kane, you hit Conrad. What? Is he? Yeah. Oh, God. The game was constantly being iterated on weeks before its release, and Telltale couldn't make up their fucking minds on what they wanted to do. Telltale did not know what story they wanted to tell, and as a result, they kept changing things left and right. My first few videos on the game were pretty rough, given that I was actively data mining the game as it was being released episodically. Part of the reason I did that in the first place was honestly because the first two episodes were just so terrible, I felt the need to find out if there was more to the game than it ended up being. But I had no idea just how far they went in sabotaging any success the game might have had. I suppose at the very least we got some decent music from it, right? Continuing the topic of music from the last video, there are at least two tracks I'm aware of that got cut. There might be more, but I don't care. Like the last albums Jared released, the a &F albums are organised chronologically, and from that we can figure out where these songs would have played. These next songs were supposed to play directly after the intro with Javier's family. Let's begin with the first one. This song is actually a remix of Clementine's theme, but why is it unused? Well, it's my belief that this song would have played during the babysitter flashback. I mentioned it before, but there was supposed to be a flashback that showed how Sandra got bit, and how Clementine escaped to her treehouse. The reason it was cut is because Telltale are fucking idiots. Now, the next song that plays is a bit more dangerous sounding. It's straight up called A New Frontier. It can be assumed that directly after this Clementine flashback, day one of the apocalypse, that it would skip to the current day. In the first round of images they showed for the game, we can see yet another scene that was cut from the game, that shows an afraid looking Clementine in an alleyway with AJ. Obviously I'm just guessing here, but 
it's likely that this is where the new frontier would have taken AJ away from her, against her will, deeming her unfit to look after him. We would have seen the apocalypse from two different perspectives, Javier and Clementine's lives. It would be essentially like how they promised it would, similar to Tales from the Borderlands. I'm guessing we would have met Mason here too. I don't know if I ever spoke about Mason before, but he was essentially meant to be the carver of the new frontier. Melissa Hutchison actually spoke about recording lines involving this guy, and how she really put work into it, but it all ended up getting cut. These episodes were, I didn't even know what was going to be left in and what wasn't. Mm, um, wow, that's They crazy. were going in a totally different direction. Uh, what was it? With episode... I don't want to get you. In well, trouble. I kind of can. There was there was a a bad you know the new frontier people, but there was a kind of Carver esque you know mm. um, character, uh, and it's kind of a bummer because there was some really awesome recordings of that of basically kind of the backstory on me and AJ getting separated, and there was like some mm. legitimate like awesome. We still don't scenes, know what which happened. I'm sure got yeah, cut. we still haven't gotten there yet. Yeah. yeah, at least not where I am. I assume we will. So. Yeah. yeah. So who is Mason? Well, Mason is actually just Lingard, the doctor. Same model, they just changed his name and his backstory. And if you're asking yourself why they cut this, just remember, this is Telltale. They haven't made a game that wasn't a hacked apart mess since The Walking Dead Season 1. As you can probably gather by the length of this video, a lot of new information came out in the time of my last videos on the game. A good bit of info came from the creative director of A New Frontier, who answered fan questions in an AMA on the Telltale forums. It was here where she revealed what the original story was. Apparently Kate did not exist in an early version of the story. Javier was branded against his will and escaped, but still had to save his family. David, Gabe and Mariana who were still in sight. Seeing as Clementine also had family she needed to get back, they shared the same goals and it made sense for them to stick together. This story was changed because it didn't feel like an authentic Walking Dead story. But a brother cuckolding story is? That's not all though. One thing that was clearly important in an earlier version was Javier's ability to speak Spanish. I think I showed this off in a previous video, but originally Javier would have spoken Spanish to his family. You remember this guy from episode 4? Originally, he was chained up, forced to work against his will, but could also speak Spanish. Javier would speak to him while he was being guarded by Ava, who was originally more of an enforcer type character than the second in command to David she ends up being in the final game. Clint originally did not exist as a character, and Joan was originally Eleanor's mum. Could you imagine how much better written and what a more interesting twist it would be if Eleanor learned her own mother was in charge of this huge community? It would make her betrayal against the group later on make way more sense. But of course, that's actually a really cool idea, so of course it didn't happen. You know, when you cut stuff from any other video game, like a level or mission or something, it's not a big deal. Usually when stuff gets cut in video games, it's almost always because of time. Strict schedules and deadlines mean it can be tough to polish something or create custom assets necessary for it to be presentable or playable. And perhaps a game is actually better off without it. It may have just been filler. Games are about making something that's fun or at the very least, engaging. Sometimes cuts can be necessary in making a game for the better. The problem when it comes to games made by Telltale is that this argument holds no water at all. When you cut a scene from a Telltale game, you're not just cutting the gameplay associated with it, you're cutting the story. You're removing context that's necessary for the player to connect with the characters and understand what's going on. I think I speak for everyone when I say that most of the stuff I've shown off on this channel are things that never should have been cut or changed whatsoever. I think your game has failed when it's more interesting to talk about what's not in the story than what actually is. 
and nowhere is that more prevalent than this season. And it might be completely understandable if these changes were made to accommodate for a release date. Like, maybe they really wanted a scene in the game, but just couldn't afford it in both time and cost. Then I could cut them some slack. But the reality is that these changes were not made because of deadlines, but because of decisions made by executives who have no idea what makes for an interesting story. And if you're aware of what Telltale has been like for years before their eventual closure like me, then you'll know that the main culprit behind these decisions were usually not the writers or designers, but instead, the management, who thought that they somehow had a better understanding for what makes a good game, despite the company losing money for years ever since The Wolf Among Us. The, the lead executive, like, very much was interested in, like, does the plot make sense and do the, is, does the mechanics of the story and the interactive stuff make sense and didn't really care about, are these characters likable? Like, do the, the char character beats were, like, always cut. Everyone always, the fans often notice, like, season one of The Walking Dead had a whole bunch of scenes where you could just dick around and talk to people and just, like, learn about them. And it's not even about the plot, right? Like, and trying to create scenes like that because of the nature of the view, view process where, it, like, honestly, if you just played, like, a well-paced movie, it probably was going to get through. But if it played, like, a, like, there was a really long sequence where the character walked around and, like, looked at a ton of stuff and talked to a bunch of people, that probably was going to not play well in a room. Especially early on, like, when that, when that stuff's unfinished, it's... Honestly, kind of painful if you have to sit there and watch somebody play it for like 30 minutes. But if you're playing it yourself, it probably is good, and you probably could ha let the time to make it good happen. But instead, it, stuff like that would be seen. Another thing is the executive staff had difficulty envisioning what something would look like when it was done. And you and uh, I honestly, when I was a director in those meetings, I feel like the majority of my job was going like, "This is what it will look like when it's done," or like when they had a concern, being like, "Okay, we're going to do this about that," and like constantly jumping on these grenades. And so like stuff that was half formed that could have been cool or stuff that seemed like it was paced badly but uh, but uh, but you know made the characters more well rounded that stuff just got cut it just got cut and cut and the marketing people just wanted to see something exciting and they had big voices in the room i think everything just got faster and more compressed people like kevin brunner the previous telltale ceo who stepped down halfway through anf's development which is business speak for getting his ass fired for being an incompetent moron He's mentioned constantly in articles about Telltale's hellish crunch culture, and is described as interfering with the game design process, with one employee stating that he was making games that he wanted to play. And the saddest part about this whole thing is that scumbags like Brunner will walk away from the destruction like it's nothing. I've seen people describe working on this game and at Telltale like working in a sweatshop or a factory. There's no passion or love for the product or what you're doing. It's just churning shit out because that's your job. This was supposed to be the company of great storytellers. A company that heralded itself as taking a step forward for interactive narrative. But guess what? When your lead writer and three greatest talents literally leave the company before the second half of the game is out, it's almost guaranteed to be a catastrophe. And that's honestly what we got with A New Frontier. Okay, sorry about that. Got a bit off topic. Let's get back to talking about The Walking Pudding, a new dessert. Concept artists uploaded a lot of stuff after Telltale's collapse, as well as a definitive edition adding more that was never seen before. The slaughterhouse was finally unveiled in concept art, as well as in-game renders. There's also this really weird image. I mean, just look at it. Javier's beard is literally painted on, and this image doesn't exactly represent the first episode whatsoever. I could not for the life of me track down where this image came from, and I wasn't entirely sure if it was fake or not. As it turns out though, it actually is real, as the Clem sprite used here was later reused for episode 3's promo image. It's not hard to understand why they didn't use this. Javier looks a fucking disgrace. And in case you're wondering, no, I don't have a clue why they decided to give Javier facial hair. Hey everyone, hasty as fuck edit because I can't be bothered to adjust the script, but the ex-senior marketing artist who worked at Telltale, Darren Yeo, uploaded his portfolio not that long ago while I was editing this video. On it we can see the original image that I thought might have been fake. So yeah, this definitely confirms it's real. 
Pretty weird timing, right? Looking at some of this concept art is genuinely depressing to me. Just look at this. You wouldn't even believe it was from A New Frontier. I want to play that game. We got some character art of Sandra, Clementine's babysitter from the flashback, as well as concept art of Clementine's house. I even found two in-game versions of it. The first is this one. The second one, according to the artist who made it, is just an improved version of the first. Jesus. Cut from the game and it was still being refined. Aren't you glad all the hard work people put into making this never saw the light of day? Oh, and speaking of flashbacks, do you remember that one concept art of a truck and a grave? Well, it turns out that this was supposed to be... Oh, thanks, Vaughn. Well, it turns out that this was supposed to be from the scene where we were going to bury Jane after her suicide. In fact, if we use free cam during this scene, we can see that while they're sitting in front of House, because that's totally safe, Jane is quite literally staring at her own grave. Oh, but it gets better. Gavin Hammond, the voice actor of Kenny, was generous enough to do an AMA a while back on the unofficial Telltale Discord. In that, he spoke about a cut Kenny flashback that was planned. Sounds interesting, right? Well, it turns out it was a different idea for his death flashback. Do you know what they originally wanted to happen? They wanted Kenny to sing while slowly walking forward into a river until he drowned to death. I am not fucking kidding you. Two days later, someone actually discovered the concept art depicting this scenario. Could you imagine if they went through with this? There is audio of a lake in the game files, but it never actually gets used. Now we know why. I haven't spoken about the Capricorn thing yet, have I? It's not a major detail, but I think it's worth pointing out that there was an attempt to have some kind of symbolism or motif. If you look carefully at the New Frontier brand, you'll notice that it resembles the Capricorn sign. In the first image reveal for the game, if you look very closely in the background, you'll notice the building in the back is actually called Capricorn Farms. Do you know what building that is? Well, that is the slaughterhouse. Given this symbolism was cut before the game shipped, it's possible there was meant to be more to it, but any sense of following this up was lost as the game continued development. When it comes to game files, I already covered basically everything there ever was to cover about the third season. I spoke about the slaughterhouse, showed some of the unused models, as well as cut dialogue. What more could I really have to show you? Well, until recently, nothing. That was until my friend Ket discovered something really interesting. You see, on Steam, it's possible for developers to upload earlier builds of their games. If you own the game, you can actually download a depot for these earlier builds, so long as they're not password protected. And yes, this includes earlier versions of The Walking Dead. But unfortunately, they're either password protected or unpatched, buggier builds. But you probably guessed that, seeing as I didn't show anything off in the previous videos. Strangely enough though, earlier versions of Batman, Minecraft, and Guardians of the Galaxy are available. In those depots are quite a few unused and placeholder assets not present in the final game, and are definitely rougher builds of the game. But more to the point of this video, there are a shit ton of unused animations from other Telltale games. Of course, that includes A New Frontier, and goddamn did they have a lot of unused animations present in these depots. From cut slaughterhouse animations to the Sandra flashback. As I said in the last video, it's more about the animations. Forget all about the background and stuff, it does not matter. Let's start with Mariana. So as we know, the only likeable character in the entire season gets shot in the head at the end of episode one. Oh, and Mari, if there's any trouble, you can find one of these cars. Yeah? Lock yourself in and don't come out. Not even once it's quiet. And wait as long as you can. 
Okay. In the files, I discovered that she was originally meant to be shot in the neck. What I did not know is that in another version of the story, Javier would have put down Mariana after she turned. There's a non-canon death animation if Javier doesn't, sure. Thing is, not too long ago it was discovered that right behind the trailer is a pool of blood. It's likely that this is where she would have been killed. The AMA mentions that someone else could originally have killed her. There are animations for carrying Gabe into Javier's undestroyed van and compressing his wound. Perhaps in an earlier version, it was meant to be Gabe that gets shot if Mariana got put down. There exists two animations for Clementine marking Jane's grave, where she would carve Jane and Jamie onto the grave before leaving Howe's behind. You remember those old pre-release images of what Telltale said the game would be like? And then three of those images are of scenes that literally never happened? Well, one of them takes place in what's called Richmond Alley. This alleyway can be seen in the main menu of the game, but we never actually go there in-game. Using FreeCam, we can look around the environment, and I managed to match up the two locations shown in the E3 trailer, and in the screenshot of Clementine with AJ. I have no idea what was meant to happen here, but it's my opinion that this is where AJ would be taken from Clem by the New Frontier. Given her scared reaction, it kind of adds up. There are a few animations that I believe came from this scene showing an injured Clementine. The slaughterhouse was another scene I spoke about in a previous video. I kind of went over everything there is to say about it, but new animations were discovered relating to it. I can now pretty much pinpoint exactly what happened. Both Clementine and Javier get captured by the New Frontier and get put into cages, surrounded by zombies in other cages. Luckily for Clem and Javier, the Prescott group, including Trip and Eleanor, attack the New Frontier and in the chaos, give way for Clem and Javier to escape. However, with no weapons, Javier is forced to use the environment against the raiders. There are two pretty brutal animations involving throwing a raider into a saw and another into a hook. As Clem and Javier go to leave, they pass through the turnstiles and Max, one of the raiders, gets stuck and held back by a zombie. He tries to grab hold of Clementine, but fails. As the walkers urge closer to him, he becomes more desperate, probably begging for help. Javier has the choice of shooting Max in the head or leaving him to be eaten alive by the zombies. Clementine then gets boosted by Javier to leave through the window and open the gate on the other side. 
Tripp and Javier then use a freezer to force the door shut and presumably they all make a break for it. I think this is what the first image reveal represents. Clementine and Javier having escaped from essentially a new frontier prison with the Prescott group behind them out for revenge, looking to get their families back. It sounds like a damn good action scene. It wouldn't have made or broken the game in any significant way, but I don't understand cutting an entire gameplay section from your story and leaving the player with less than there already is. I think the real slaughterhouse in this story was Telltale. They chopped and butchered this game's story to bits and pieces and they didn't even bother to wear gloves. I have no doubt people worked hard on this game and did their best with the awful conditions that were going on at Telltale. That's what makes me more frustrated, knowing that a bunch of people worked hours on end and none of that hard work will ever be seen. Nobody won with this game's development, not the fans, not the developers, certainly not the company, seeing as ANF was a huge flop. But at least I can finally say I'm done with all this crap. I suppose we should end at the beginning. Let's talk about the last thing I have to show you in this video. The Sandra flashback. This flashback takes place after the No Going Back trailer, where Clementine would talk to her mum one last time.
Hey, Sandra. This is Diana. We're still in Savannah. Uh, Ed had a little incident with some crazy guy near the hotel, so we had to get him back to the ER and have it checked out. Anyway, he's not feeling well enough to drive back tonight, so we're staying an extra day. Thanks so much for looking after Clementine, and I promise we'll be back in time before the spring break. And so, that about does it for my Walking Dead update series. I've got one last video to make on the Walking Dead cut content that you're probably going to want to watch. Thank you for all of your support, and I hope to see you there. Peace.